Chapter 1. The actual cost of the clothing industry is higher than you think. When you think about the world's most profitable industries, you probably jump to cars, entertainment, and oil. But did you know that the clothing industry is enormous? Worth around $2.5 trillion, it makes up 3% of the entire global economy. Let's not even consider the sheer amount of people recruited to help out at some stage in the clothing production process across the world. But despite its size and profitability, there's no denying that, in terms of being eco-unfriendly, the clothing industry isn't the best for the planet from water pollution, toxic chemicals, and carbon emissions. There's also the fact that many companies recruit people to make clothes in other countries, paying them very little for their efforts, in places known universally as sweatshops. Remember, fast fashion accounts for a considerable amount of clothing waste. We wear something once or twice, it goes out of fashion, and we discard it. Careful purchasing is the answer. Yet, despite all of this, we still buy a vast amount of clothes and then throw them away far too quickly. Very few people consider the impact on the planet when purchasing clothes. After all, nobody wants to feel guilty about their desire to look good. When you purchase a new pair of jeans or a new t-shirt, it's hard to know where it was made and if the people involved in making the garment were paid appropriately. But you can make a conscious decision to learn more and change your purchasing habits. If you're keen to do your bit for the planet while still maintaining your right to look fantastic, this summary will help you out. From creating a capsule wardrobe to knock the socks off anyone who sees you, to making a profit from your unwanted clothes, the Conscious Closet is a best friend to both the planet and fashion fans worldwide. Chapter 2. Create a new closet with consciously chosen pieces. How many clothes do you have in your closet that you don't wear? Perhaps pieces are lurking in the back that you're hoping to fit back into one day. Maybe there are items that you think might come back into fashion. Or it could be that you're holding on to something just in case. It's time to throw that mindset out the window and create a conscious wardrobe. Keep in mind, your closet clear-out will be difficult, and you need to be brutal. You can do it. Elizabeth Klein states it is best to sort out your clothes by season. That way, if you're going to sell any of your unwanted items, they'll be far more in demand than if they were out of season. This exercise isn't about throwing away things your heart is attached to. However, it is about learning how to shop from now on. If you find an item you really love, keep it, even if you don't wear it too often. But if you find something that you don't like or don't feel comfortable in, it needs to go. Also, anything you're not sure about, it's okay to give it a second chance. Separating your sentimental items and placing them into protective plastic covers is a good practice. Rather than keeping these in your closet, you should place them in safe storage. You can then get them out when you want them, and they won't get dusty or damaged. Another great tip is to be mindful of what you always reach for in your closet. Think about how certain items make you feel and try to pinpoint why. That will give you critical information for the next time you go shopping for clothes and will help you to avoid fad buys that don't make you feel your best. Having a closet clear out such as this is the ideal chance to start afresh. But if you find items that need a few tweaks or fixes, put them into one pile and get your sewing kit out. You could also take them to the tailor and have any alterations or fixes done professionally. Chapter 3. It's time to take responsibility for where your unwanted clothes end up. After your clear out, you'll have a large pile of clothes that you need to get rid of. Do not just throw them away. Instead, work out where they should go to ensure that they're reused by the right people. Many people assume that clothes should go to a charity or a thrift store. You may think they'll end up in someone else's hands who can make good use of them after you. But that's not always what happens. Many unwanted clothes are shipped over to other countries, often ending up in Africa. Yet many clothes by this point are badly damaged or unwearable, so they end up thrown in the trash. A complete waste. Remember, after your clear out, make a pact with yourself that you'll purchase clothing more consciously and carefully from this point on. For this reason, it's best to be more mindful of where you send your used clothes as you're having your clear out. Your options are donate clothes, items that are wearable and in clean condition. These can easily be used by other people. Sell or swap clothes, items worth a good amount of money. These should also be of top quality and on trend. Clothes to be repaired. Anything that can be repaired, for example, a small tear or a loose button, can be fixed and continue to be worn or added to the donation pile. Recycle clothes. Items that cannot be worn or fixed can go in the recycling bin. By choosing the next destination for your clothes, you can ensure that they end up in the best place possible. That may mean someone else's closet, or they can be recycled and turned into something else entirely. It may take an extra five minutes on top of your regular clear-out time, but it's worth knowing that you're not being wasteful and that someone else benefits from every piece of clothing. Did you know, eBay is one of the most common places to sell old clothes. In 2020, the site made a net profit of $10.271 million. Chapter 4. Where you send your used clothes depends on their condition. Many people still want to donate their clothes to charity and thrift stores. That's a perfectly acceptable thing to do, but you should do some careful investigating work beforehand. We've already mentioned that many items are shipped abroad for reuse, but still end up in the trash. To avoid that happening to your unwanted items, be mindful about where you send them. Do some research into the charity you want to donate to and ensure it is reputable and connected to something you believe in. Sites such as Charity Navigator will help you understand more. If you're choosing to put your old clothes into clothing bins, don't simply assume they go to a charity shop. Some are sold for profit. Check the outside of the bin for the organization's name and do some research online before tossing them in your unwanted clothes. Remember, 
If you want to be sure where your donated items will go, take them directly to a place in need, such as a homeless shelter or crisis center. Before donating your items, be sure that you clean them thoroughly and empty the pockets. If you're donating shoes, tie them together with the laces so they don't get separated and be sure to fix any small things, such as a tiny tear or a loose button. You can choose to sell your clothes instead. If they're in top condition, you can make extra cash from your items. Sites such as eBay and Poshmark are two common choices these days. However, to make any money, you should check beforehand to see how much other similar items are selling for. Then you can work out whether it's worthwhile. You should also look to sell items that are in season and on trend only. What do you do if your clothes aren't worth very much? You have options. You can, of course, donate, recycle, or use them around the house. Elizabeth Klein Chapter 5. Be selective about your clothing choices and build a solid capsule wardrobe. Once your closet is clean, you will have the items you really love, which you'll wear time and time again. From this point, you need to be mindful and careful when shopping to ensure that your wardrobe doesn't end up in the same state again. It's about buying less, but knowing what you do buy is of good quality and will last. That way, you know that you're not going to waste clothing items and you'll get your money's worth over time. Buy less. Choose well. Make it last. Vivian Westwood The focus should be on a clutter-free wardrobe that doesn't have time for waste or over-the-top consumption. Of course, all of this sounds easy, but it isn't effortless in practice. You risk getting sucked into marketing ploys and convinced that you need something. You really don't. Buying less clothing means that you can choose better pieces and wear them longer. And as a result, you're supporting sustainable fashion. It might seem like a small contribution, but it will be a significant benefit if we all do it. Elizabeth Klein states that wearing a piece of clothing for nine months longer than you usually would help to reduce its water, waste, and carbon footprint by up to 30%, according to Rap UK. That's a massive saving. Remember, mindfully buying reduces damage to the planet, supports sustainability, and saves money over the long term. Challenge yourself to go on a shopping fast. Set a time limit for your no-shop challenge and find someone to do it with so you can hold one another accountable. If one of you starts to become a little weak when looking in the shop window, you can drag each other away and go and get coffee instead. If you're used to perusing the shops on a Saturday afternoon, it won't be easy, but remind yourself of why you're doing it. Any items you buy from this point should form your capsule wardrobe, and everything will have a place and use. That means things can be mixed up and matched to create beautiful outfits. Chapter 6. Conscious Fashion Brands Are The Way Forward Many brands are known to be fashion conscious. That means they create pieces that have less impact on the environment and their production methods don't involve the use of underpaid labor, such as sweatshops. While it can be hard to find these types of brands, you can do more research into the brands that you regularly buy and work out where they sit on the sustainability scale. An excellent first step is simply buying quality items and not falling into the fashion fad trap. Before buying, be sure to check seams, zips, and holes. You make better purchasing decisions and create a better capsule wardrobe when you're more careful. Yet, it can be very easy to fall into the trap of deals and discounts. When shopping, avoid looking at the price before you've decided whether or not to buy it. That way, you're not manipulated by a money-off deal. It's also important to note that cheap doesn't always mean good quality. In fact, it rarely does. Sourcing out sustainable and conscious brands is always a good choice, but you should remember that new brand can never be completely perfect. The point is that these businesses are looking to do better and they're making a proactive effort. These are the types of brands you should spend your money on. If you're unsure where to start looking for conscious brands, Elizabeth Klein suggests heading online and doing some research. The Good On You app is a good starting place, as this rates brands according to their sustainability and ethics. You can also search online and follow bloggers who talk about sustainable fashion. All of this will arm you with the information you need to make better shopping decisions. Keep in mind, if your favorite brand appears to be problematic in the sustainability stakes, contact them to talk about your concerns. Highlighting issues is the first step to making positive changes. It's easy to fall into the trap of feeling like you need to buy the latest fashion piece or you'll be left behind in the trend stakes. But if it doesn't fit or suit you, what's the point? You need to feel good in your clothes, and one way to do that is to shop more carefully, with both style and sustainability in mind. Conclusion We all need to take a stand and do our best for the planet. Of course, recycling, reducing our use of plastic, and cutting down on our carbon footprint is a fantastic start, but it goes far beyond that. The clothing industry is a multi-million dollar train that shows no signs of slowing down. By being more careful with our purchases and buying from businesses that make an effort to be more sustainable and ethical, we can start to turn the tide. Your closet is no doubt full of things you don't wear, but don't feel ashamed of that fact because you're certainly not the only one. You can choose to continue buying fad items that end up gathering dust, or you can choose to be more conscious about your purchases. Start with the big clear out and see how good it feels. You'll no doubt feel lighter on your feet already. Then do a good deed or two by donating and recycling items. If you choose to sell good quality items, that's great too. Someone else gets to wear the pieces and you get a little extra cash. The whole point is that we're not just filling up landfill sites with clothes that aren't wanted anymore. If we all follow Elizabeth Klein's advice, we will not only look fantastic, but also might go a long way to saving the world, too. Try this. Set aside a day to pull everything out of your closet and sort through it. Throw on some music and get into it. Write a list of your favorite charities and look into how you can donate directly to them. If you want to fix some items but you're not the best with a needle and thread, check out some YouTube videos and teach yourself.